Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson. Cincinnati is home to one of the best zoos in the world. But did you know that the Cincinnati Zoo is also part of an international research effort to save plant and animal species from extinction? Well, that's why I'm here to talk to Dr. Terry Roth, who's the director for the Center for Conservation and Research of Endangered Wildlife, to learn how her and her team are working to save this planet's amazing species. Right, I am Terry Roth, and I'm the director of CRU, which is the Center for Conservation and Research of Endangered Wildlife here at the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden. CRU's mission is saving species with science, so we're all about doing conservation research that is going to help us save some of Earth's imperiled plants and animals. And so I've always loved animals, wanted to do something with them, and I just find the challenge of kind of figuring out the unknown to be just really fascinating. And so that was science for me. It was trying to solve these problems nobody solved before and helping wildlife at the same time. And that was just a, a beautiful marriage of the two passions I have. Hey, Terry. Hey, Chris. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yeah. So where are we at? Welcome to the Endocrine Lab. Endocrine Lab. Well, what do you guys do here? This is one of Crew's busiest labs, actually. We do a lot of assays, and we get a lot of results from hormones by the work that we do in this lab. Okay, so hormones. So what do those hormones tell you about, about the animals that you're working with? Hormones can tell us all kinds of stuff. It's, it's extremely interesting data. Um, it tells us if an animal is pregnant. It can tell okay. us if an animal is reproductively active. It can tell us if an animal is sexually mature can even tell us if an animal is stressed. So that's got to be really helpful information for you as you're trying to protect these species. It really is. Yeah, that's what it all comes down to. We're just trying to learn as fast as we can so we can do whatever we can to help save these endangered species. So now this is going to be maybe a silly question, but how do you go about getting animal hormones? Well, it's tricky. You know, <laughs> in humans, they usually take a blood sample. Right. We can't do that. Oh, no. More, you guys, often, more often, we use poop. You guys use, you guys use poop? We collect animal poop. Well, who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone should do it. That's right. But you guys do it for science. It's a gold mine of information. Well, let's, uh, well, can we check some, check out some animal poop? Let's talk to somebody who does it. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi. How's I'm it going? Good. I'm Elizabeth. I'm a research associate here at Crew. Awesome. Well, what, what are you working on? I am pulling off some of our fecal extracts for our samples to run today. This is this is animal poop. What it is. <laughs> so at the bottom there, that's animal poop, what, and what that's animal? our extract. This happens to be Renji, who's a snow leopard. That's snow leopard. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. And one of the really cool things, her poop is not actually green. We give all of our animals dye who are in studies like this, so we can tell whose poop is whose when we're measuring it. So Renji is green. Renji is green. Okay, so so what have you been doing here with 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 Renji, the snow leopard's poop? We've been looking and tracking to see if she's ready to breed or not, and since she has been breeding, if she's actually pregnant. Okay. So that's one of the tests that we're doing right now with her. Very cool. So how does the so this is a this centrifuge? How does that? Um, how does that work? Does it separate some of the chemicals within within her, yes. her fecal matter? What's, so how does that work? The samples have been rocking on this guy here okay. overnight, and they've been all mixed up. So this what this centrifuge does is it pushes all that fecal matter down to the bottom, okay. and it um, leaves the extract here, which now has all the hormones that I'm going to test in it. So so we're going to test this hormone mm -hmm. that, that green liquid to see what hormones and see yes. if she if she's ready to to have a baby. Yes, exactly. Oh, that's awesome. Can we, well, let's can we see how that, how you guys do that? Yeah. All right. Well, let's do it. Chris, here is one of our plates where we've actually run some hormones and done hormone testing on. There you go. And you can see by the different colors there, we look at the colors to tell us how much hormone is in each one of those samples. So in the case of Renji, we're looking for different colors to tell us if she is actually pregnant or not. That's just, that's just so cool. So what else can these hormones tell you other than if, someone, if one of the animals is pregnant or not? So one of the other things that we use them for is to timing estrus to see if an animal is ready to mate which is important in breeding situations. It's also really important for us to help time our artificial inseminations that we do here. Oh, very cool. So, so the hormones tell you when it's time to do the artificial insemination and you guys have a whole, you, so you guys have a whole cryo bio bank. Yes, correct. Oh, that's really, really yes. cool. Can we check that out? Of course. Awesome. Amy showed me around the cryo bank where crew uses liquid nitrogen to freeze and store their samples. That got me interested in crew's work with endangered plants. So I headed over to the Plant Propagation Lab to talk to Valerie and learn about her research. Hey, Valerie. Hi. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thanks. So tell me a little bit about your, your, your research here. Well, we work with plants um, in a little bit different way here. We work with plants in test tubes, and okay. we also freeze tissues. So what you see here uh, is the room where we grow all our plants in test tubes. 
And we do that so we can propagate the plants. There's a special method for propagation. And we're working with endangered plants. Right. And so endangered plants may not have a lot of plants out there in the wild. The, mm -hmm. the numbers are getting small. And so we will take uh, tissues from those plants and put them in test tubes on a special medium. Um, it's well, that's, it's that's gel. Like a, yeah, it's a gel. Yeah, it's like So auger. you guys don't use soil or anything like that, just like a, like a gel thing? Not at this stage, okay. right. Everything in here is sterile as well. Gotcha. And um, this is a cloning method. You guys and, clone plants here? Right. <laughs> Attack of the clones. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but as you know, clones make copies of the same thing. Right. And we're in conservation, and we want to preserve genetic diversity of those uh, endangered plants that are out there. Because that's better for their, po their population. Exactly. Ah. So what we do is in the field, we try to get a little bit of one plant, a little bit of another plant, a little bit of another plant, uh, without hurting the plants out there, just sure. a little bit of tissue, and we can put that in culture and grow plants, more plants from each one of those tissues. So we can maintain a, a number of different plants, but make more of them. And that we can produce plants and propagate them and give them back to folks who are rest restoring populations in the field. Hey Chris, before you leave, I want to show you something really cool. We're going to go up and do um, an aardvark ultrasound. An aardvark ultrasound? Yeah. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah like, I definitely want to check that out. So how uh, how far along is is, the, is our aardvark? So we're estimating that Allie is about 60 to 90 days along in her pregnancy. We actually captured this pregnancy earlier than um, we normally do with the aardvark. So okay. the embryo is still very tiny at this point. So we're guy. yeah we're not exactly positive, but she should be due around September or October. Well, they so. seem like quite a happy couple. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they're very cute together. So man, crew is really doing some awesome work here at the zoo. How does that work with the overall idea of conservation? Like what kind of effects are you guys seeing out in the populations out in the wild with, with what you're doing? Well, you know, with science, um, the steps are incremental. So yeah. it, it, it is a slow process, um, but ultimately the results can be spectacular. And I think some of the work we've done here, just in trying to breed these critically endangered species and using our reproductive techniques, you know, we've managed to breed the Sumatran rhino. Nobody else had done that. So yeah, that's in a, the world. Oh, that's huge. That's huge. And that species is almost extinct. So what a dramatic impact that has had now on turning that extinction crisis around. Ocelots. We've produced over 23 ocelot kittens in zoos across North America. Just, you know, it, it adds up. Yeah. And so it does make an impact. It makes an impact on the animals in our zoos. It makes an impact on the populations. And then it starts to make an impact on wild populations as well, like with the Sumatran rhino. So what can we do here in Cincinnati to help with the conservation effort uh, overall? There's so many things people can do in their daily lives. And you know, I love telling people that what crew does is really important, the science is important, but it, it alone is not gonna save these, these wildlife species. So as individuals in our society, we can do things just every day in decreasing our footprint, you know? Gotcha recycle that's all those things add up bring um, a water bottle exactly <laughs> leave the plastic <laughs> bottles alone that's right we don't need them um so the, all these incremental things even you know how do we vote who are we voting for what are they going to do to help preserve the wildlife and wild places you know think of those things there's just so many different ways of course come to the zoo and you know enjoy the nature and, and support you guys and support the work that's going on right here in the community well that's awesome well terry thank you so much for showing us around your lab yeah uh, it was awesome and thank you to the whole entire crew staff and the entire cincinnati zoo for their efforts in conservation and thank you guys for watching and we will see you next time on science around cincy well that's why i'm here to talk to talk to Derek. Exactly. Yeah, dairy broth. <laughs> but did you know that the Cincinnati ass, my fault, might be. Chris, good to see you. Good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. I couldn't get the tube back in and <laughs> <laughs> I, feel, I feel good about that.